Hi everyone, here's the Bukemis once again, and a few years ago I filmed a video about five games, video games, board games, text games, every Lovecraft fan should play. Uh, I personally being a huge Lovecraft fan uh, and Lovecraft nerd. And lots of people, I got lots of comments to that video, lots of people recommended in particular two games, the first one being Darkest Dungeon, which I will play sometime in the future. Uh, if I have to be completely honest with you, it does not look to me like the sexiest game on the market, but I will try it because lots of people recommended it. The other game being Bloodborne, which I'm, I'm sure, I'm confident it's amazing and spectacular and the best game ever. I still don't own a PS4, uh, so yeah, fuck me. Today I'm going to recommend you yet another game you should absolutely play if you like the works of H.P. Lovecraft, if you like of, if you like Lovecraftian horror in general, probably the best Lovecraftian game I've ever played, together with Anchor Head, which I mentioned in that other video. That game is called The Last Door, and it's a point-and-click adventure, a pixel art point-and-click adventure. Now, I don't know about you, um, I personally was hooked the first time I, you know, I read about that game, but if you find that, that the pixel art, if you take a look at a few pictures of it and you find the pixel art sort of ridiculous, um, kind of retro, uh, not something that goes together well with horror, be ready to, you know, be proven wrong, because this is one of the most terrifying game experiences I've ever played, and it is a wonderful and extensive love letter to gothic horror in general, to the works of H.P. Lovecraft, there are a few beautiful references in it, and to the works of Poe, to the works of, you know, Sheridan Le Fanu, to so much a classic horror from the 19th and 20th gener uh, 20th century in particular. Uh, it also features all three of the main types of Lovecraftian horror. There's straight up supernatural horror in this game. There's, you know, alienoid mythos horror with, you know, creatures with tentacles. And there is cosmic wandering. And all of these genres are rendered beautifully. Each um, chapter in this game, basically each level in this game, Kind of, is sort of a homage to a specific type of narrative or to a specific story. For instance, there's a, a chapter in the second um, installment of The Last Door, which is basically a sort of a, a, a reference, sort of an homage to The Shadow Over Innsmouth. It's a great game, it's, it's such a rewarding game, and I, it's a beautiful experience through and through. The game's pixel art is simply gorgeous, as you can see, and it helps the whole narrative element and the horror element of the game beautifully. You know uh, how in so many Lovecraftian games and Lovecraftian movies the whole horror effect, the whole scary element of the narrative is ruined? That is not necessarily native to Lovecraft. Uh, I recently talked about it in a video on a book called Ag Seed by Margaret Atwood. Uh, that's a phenomenon you always also get with representations of Shakespeare's Macbeth. Uh, the witches in Macbeth are really scary and really sinister when you read about them, but then when you see them represented on stage or on the screen, they are either sort of ridiculous or in any case, even when they are at least a, lit, a little bit scary, they never manage to achieve the same narrative effect, the same pathos as you find in the written thing. That is because, of course, when you read about these things, your imagination creates an image that can never be rep fully represented, that can never be realized in real life. The game's pixel art helps on this front for two reasons. In the first place, it gives you a hint of what you're looking at, more than the actual thing. And in that way, it forces your imagination to do the job. You will have to imagine yourself most of the horrors you'll be facing throughout the game, and in that, in that way you will probably scar yourself much more easily than if any type of game designer or any, kind, any type of artist had tried to reproduce these things through any type of HD graphic. Also, faces in the game all look sort of blank, and that is very disturbing. So many games, even the infamous Five Nights at Freddy's, exploit this feature of, you know, uh, puppets and uh, masks, this disturbing potential. When you see, when you look at these blank faces, you don't know how to interpret them, and that in itself is scary. When characters in this game 
start to act strange and maybe attack you or maybe you know try to strangle you all of a sudden the, fa the fact that their faces do not change at all while they're doing that adds another layer of fear to the whole thing the overall effect of all this is simply scarring the the, the last story is truly one of the most scary uh, game experiences i've ever played just as much as Anchor Head is. Uh, Anchor Head being an interactive fiction text adventure, I talked about it in that other video I mentioned at the beginning. I think one of the reasons why these, um, these games are so scary is that they, you know, they take the whole element of Lovecraftian horror, this whole idea that horror is mentioned, but ne not quite directly explored, not quite directly reported, and take it one step further. Already in Lovecraft, uh, even considering that Lovecraft is so fond of, you know, mentioning horrible things that he can't quite describe to you, there are some passages that are very graphic and very vivid. The end of the rats in the walls is one of that. Most of the lurking fear is another one. There are some passages in the Call of Cthulhu which make pretty explicit references to cannibalism and uh, more horrible stuff. These games do the same, and while they never become too gory or too explicit, before they stop they give you just a hint of terrible, scarring, hideous crimes and hideous horrors of the worst possible sort. I can't quite recommend The Last Door enough. You can play the first installment, which is basically half of the game, on your iPhone, and the very first chapter, I think, is free. But more than that, the, both uh, Last Door 1 and The Last Door 2, which concludes the whole narrative, they are on sale on Steam for the Halloween sale, and you can get the whole thing for four dollars three dollars something like that in general too even if you watch this video after the first of november it's uh in general it's very cheap on steam you you have no excuse you have to play this game do let me know what you think about the last door if you've played it or once you've played it and you know if, if you have more lovecraftian games i should definitely check out let me know in the comments below uh, happy halloween everybody and i will see you in the next video more book reviews coming bye guys